The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Rab Chaim Kanievsky, he never refused to be a sandik. Sandik is the one who holds the baby during the bris. And the commentaries say that if you are a sandik, you're going to become wealthy. That's what it says. It's a school of Hashiris. Now, Rab Chaim in Bnei Brak, it's such a prolific community. There were times when he could be a sandik 10 times a day. So people tell me, why don't you move to Bnei Brak? You'll have 10 bris in a day. The answer is they pay more in New York than they pay in Bnei Brak. But whatever. So one time in my life, I was fortunate to have Rab Chaim as a sandik. I'm very close with his family, the Grainemans, and they heard I was coming to Israel. They said, listen, if you come right from the airport, we'll have Rab Chaim waiting in the base medrash, and we'll bring the baby there, and you'll be able to be the male. I feel so bad. I regret that I didn't hire a photographer. But whatever, to be able to move his hands, and you know, he had little fluffy hands, and just to move the hands along the legs of the baby so that it would be in a perfect position was just precious. So he always accepted to be sounded. Listen to this. One day, a couple who never had no children comes to the Rab Chaim and said, we heard that you're going up to Kiryat Shmona. It's three hours from Bnei Brak. Would you mind on the way back? Because you're going with your wife. On the way back, there's an Arab town. Many people don't go there. But it's called Shunam. That's where the Isha Hashunamis is buried. And people say that those who don't have children, if they go to the caver, to the graveside of the Isha Hashunamis, that they'll have children. So would you mind, my wife and I will meet you there. You go to the bris and then have your driver on the way back to Bnei Brak. Go make a little diversion, go to Shunam. And my wife and I will meet you. They will pray together because we're looking desperately to have a child. Rab Chaim thinks for a few minutes. He says, okay, I'll meet you there. Fine. Rab Chaim goes to the bris on the way down. He comes to the town of Shunam. He gets out of his car. There are two busloads of people, of couples who don't have children waiting to pray with him. And Rab Chaim gets out of the car and he says, what in the world is going on here? Now, he didn't say that exactly, but that's what he meant, right? He said, well, what happened here? And, and the guy said, Rebbe, please excuse me. I told people that you were going to come to Davin, so they also, Nebuch, they don't have children. This one five years, this one four years, this one eight years. So Rab Chaim sees two busloads of people getting off, two couples, you know, couples of busloads. And he says, men on this side, women on this side, and we'll all pray. And everybody's davening and crying. And after 15, 20 minutes, he says, okay, everybody get back on the bus. Me and the Rebbeton, we're going to daven alone up front. And that's what happens. He comes up front and he's davening with his wife. Now, I have a niece. Her name is Hanala Dollinger. She works in the Maine Hayeshua Hospital in Bnei Brak, in the obstetrical ward. She told me she had a neighbor who was married for eight years, had no children. She was one of the couples on the bus. She said nine, 10, and 11, 12 months after Rab Chaim was there with his wife, so many of these couples who never had children suddenly had children. So the couple who lived next to my niece went to Rab Chaim to say thank you. And there are many, many great rabbis who say, you know, people come to ask us for blessings, but when things work out, they never tell us. But she wanted to go say thank you. So she sent, went to Rab Chaim to say thank you. You know what Rab Chaim said? You're the 14th couple of those buses to have a child. You know what that means? You got to care for somebody. You got to daven for other people. Now, I want to show you something. I don't usually show this around, but I'm going to show it to you because I believe that in the time of Aseris Yomei Tshuva, we have to begin caring for others. I carry a card with me. Now, this little card that started during COVID, I have on it a list of people that I pray for every single day, men, women, and children. Now, what I would suggest, I know not everybody agrees with this, I would suggest pray for those that you know. I know many times we get an email or a WhatsApp, you know, pray for this and that. You don't know who they are. It doesn't mean anything. It's like a roll call. It doesn't, doesn't touch you. But I know every single one of these men, women, and children, including a little girl in Australia who's got serious eye problems. And I know her Bubby very, very well. And if you have a card and you carry it with you, and when you say Rufaino, you're davening for these people, that's part of chesed. That's part of caring. And I'm telling you, when you care for others, Hashem is going to care for you. You know why? That's what David Amela says. Hashem Tzilcho. God is your shadow. We have to begin caring for other people. And when you carry this card with you, it doesn't have to have as many names. I have 25, 30 names or whatever. You don't have to have that many. But just you know people that need Shaduchin. 
You know people that need panosa. You know people that are not well. You know people that want to have children. We all know these people. Write it down. And at least once a day, daven for them. Hashem sees you care. He'll care about you. It's a guarantee. Hashem tzilcha. God is your shadow. That's the Pneim Ishel Ochev. Do you know that when his Rebetzin died, when Rab Chaim Kanievsky's Rebetzin died on Shabbos, Cholomoyed Sukkot, all right, your side is coming up. So it was Shabbos, they couldn't have a funeral. So all his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren came to his house. And they all asked him, they said, tell us, what was Bobby's greatest midah? What was her greatest characteristic? So some people thought she would, he would say, well, Shemir Salashim, because she always used to tell people to learn the halachas of guarding your tongue. Some people thought Sneas, some people thought obviously, so you know what she said? You know what he said? Her greatest midah was Savlonis, patience. He said, you know how many women came and she listened to all of them and she prayed with all of them and she cried with them. We have no time in the big cities in Toronto and New York. We're so busy doing for so many things. We have no time to listen. Listening is chesed. Listening is patience. And that's what she had. And Rab Chaim said to his children and grandchildren, you know that some of them were not all there. And still, she had patience. And the more public you become, the more demands people make on your time, and then you're tested whether you have patience for the simple person. We have to have patience for everyone. That's really what it's all about. That was what Rab Chaim felt was her greatest mida. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.